Hello everyone. So today I will be discussing weakness, by which I mean that muscle weakness is in a, in a specific group of muscles. So there are five important differentials for it. Uh, number one is Guillain-Barré syndrome, that is GBS, myasthenia gravis, stroke NTIA, Bell's palsy, and multiple sclerosis. Out of these, I will be discussing GBS, uh, Bell's palsy, and multiple sclerosis in detail. The stroke in TIA I have already discussed in a previous video of walls and myasthenia gravis is a low yield topic so I won't be discussing it in very much detail. Okay so first of all how to take history uh, from any patient who presents with complaint of weakness in a group of muscles. So you will do odipara that is onset, duration, intensity, progression, aggravating factor and relieving factor. So, um, and also you will ask whether the weakness is constant or it comes and goes, okay? After this, you will ask about anything else and you will ask about your questions about your differential diagnosis, that is your DD questions, okay? So, you will ask if there is any slurring of speech or facial drooping, okay? So, these can be symptoms of stroke or TIA. They can also be symptoms of bell pulse, Bell's palsy, okay? So, you can, you can ask whether... There is any slurring of speech, any facial drooping, any difficulty in swallowing. So basically in stroke and TIA, you will have slurring of speech, you will have difficulty swallowing and you will have facial drooping as well. Whereas, whereas in Bell's palsy, you only have uh, facial drooping, okay? All right, any numbness or tingling? Any numbness or tingling or muscle pain? So this numbness and tingling and muscle pain occur in MS, that is multiple sclerosis and also in GBS, okay? History of viral infection. Viral infection, for example, diarrhea, okay, or flu-like symptom. Uh, they usually precede GBS. Uh, so if the patient says with, that it comes in a takes, the muscle weakness comes in a takes, then it points towards MS. Also, if there are balance problems in addition to the muscle weakness, it points towards MS. Then if there is history of taking canned food or food poisoning, then it points out toward botulism and if there is a uh, basically difficulty in breathing and difficulty in swallowing i have written it in red because these are red flags okay so red flags in cases of for example gbs so in gbs as you all know that in gbs there is history of viral infection and uh, then after one week or 10 days of viral infection uh, muscle weakness starts and it basically starts from the feet and it basically ascend upwards towards the body, the upper part of the body. So first there is there is involvement of the leg muscles and then abdominal muscles and then uh, respiratory muscles. So when respiratory muscles are involved, then this is a red flag and we need to put this patient on ventilator. So difficulty in breathing and swallowing is a red flag in case of GBS. It is also a red flag in cases of stroke because then you have to be super careful with this patient uh, because he's at a very high risk of aspiration pneumonia and a lot of patients in stroke can die of aspiration pneumonia. So then you have to keep this patient nail by mouth or you have to pass the NG tube for feeding. Okay, so this is basically a red flag. So I hope you are clear about the differentials. Uh, in GBS, as I told you, viral infection and after seven to 10 days, Weakness starts and it ascends upward. And botulism, on the other hand, uh, there is history of eating cane food. Okay, or there are in infants, there can be history of eating honey. Uh, then after some time of eating cane food, weakness starts, but the weakness starts from the upper part of the body. Okay, so it can start from um, extracular muscles. Okay, so first of all, there is ptosis and then there is problem with facial muscles, then respiratory muscles, and then the weakness proceeds downwards to a body. Okay, in multiple sclerosis, multiple sclerosis, the weakness comes and goes, and it involves different group of muscles. For example, at one time, it for example, in the first attack, it will involve muscle of the right arm. Okay, then muscles of the right arm will get better after some time, and it will involve muscle of the left leg. Like randomly, it involves different group of muscles, and it comes and goes and it takes. And in MS, there is uh, associated balance problem as well. There is muscle pain and stiffness as well, and there is numbness and tingling as well. Okay, and in MS, there can be loss of bowel and bladder control as well.
okay in stroke and tias you all know that in tia there is temporary weakness of a specific group of muscle so for example muscle of face or muscle of uh, leg or muscle of arm and there is slurring of speech difficulty swallowing etc in stroke it is permanent okay the same symptoms but permanent all right uh, and in myasthenia gravis as you all know that the weakness it the patient is better in the morning and then the weakness grows towards the end of the day and especially involve the extraocular muscles so patient complain of double vision towards the end of the day so i hope that was clear about the differential that was basically your history of presenting illness so you asked about odipara and then you ask about these um in the odipara you will have some idea that where the patient is leading you and then you will ask all these differential questions to rule out other differential diagnosis then you will ask about past history have you ever had these kind of symptoms before and do you ha have you been diagnosed with any medical condition at all then you will ask about meftosa that is medication allergies family history and psychosocial and then lifestyle questions that is cigarette alcohol diet exercise etc regarding examination you need to do two types of examination number one is examining uh, vitals and uh, general physical examination and number second is neurological examination okay then you will ask the patient about any ideas any concerns and any expectations from the team then you will start with the management so as you all know that in management we first of all explain the condition to the patient okay so uh, you will tell the patient for example if this is a patient of gbs let's start with gbs so it'll tell the patient that you have a condition in which a person's immune system are take the nerves that control the muscle movements, okay? As well as those that transmit pain, temperature, and touch sensation. That's why you are experiencing muscle weakness, loss of sensations in the legs, etc. So you will explain in this way in simple words for the patient. And then you will tell the cause. You will tell them that this is usually triggered by a viral infection. It is a potentially serious condition. However, most people tend to recover. Okay. So you will tell the patient that it is a potentially serious condition. That's why we are admitting him today. However, most people tend to recover completely. Regarding investigations, we will, we will do complete blood count. So as it is triggered by a viral infection, you will have leukocytosis. Okay. Uh, we will do EMG, that is electromyography, which will have specific findings. And we will also do lumbar puncture. In lumbar puncture, in cases of GBS, there is albuminocytological dissociation. Okay, so three investigations, CBC, EMG, and lumbar puncture. Okay, now what about uh, treatment? So number one is supporter treatment and number two is specific treatment. We are going to admit this patient, by the way, because GBS is a serious condition. So we will, go, we will admit this patient. We will request these investigations to confirm. We will inform our seniors. We will give supportive care. So supportive care will be vital signs monitoring. Okay, so we'll monitor the blood pressure because blood pressure can fluctuate in these patients. We'll monitor the respiratory function because we want to look out for respiratory muscle involvement. As soon as respiratory muscles are involved in GBS, we put the patient on ventilator. So vital signs monitoring is very important. For muscle pain, we'll give the patient painkiller, we'll give physiotherapy, and we'll give leg stocking as the patient uh, has muscle weakness which start from the legs. Okay, so the legs are the most affected part and patients are not going to be able to use their legs and they will be bed bound. So there is a high risk of DVT. So we will give leg uh, stockings to prevent DVT. Specific treatment is IVIG, that is IV immunoglobulin. And we will safety net the patient that if you feel any breathing difficulty at any point, please let us know immediately. So this is an admitted patient. Uh, we are also monitoring his vital sign, but still we will safety net that if you feel any uh, breathing difficulty please let us know immediately okay because this is a red flag in this condition now multiple sclerosis in multiple in multiple sclerosis we will explain the uh, to the patient that you have a condition that affects brain and spinal cord and it can cause a wide range of potential problems for example muscle weakness pain and fatigue because brain and spinal cord control all the body function okay um so we'll tell the patient that you have this condition and it's called multiple sclerosis. Uh, we'll also tell him that it is unfortunately a lifelong condition and it can come and go. And in some people, um, it is per, it is constant. In some people, it is relapsing, remitting. That is, it comes and goes. Okay. But there are medications to control the symptoms. 
So we will do investigation that is routine blood tests and MRI in brain and spinal cord. MRI brain and spinal cord is basically specific investigations for um, uh, multiple sclerosis, specific and diagnostic investigation. Mm, we will inform our seniors. Symptomatic treatment here is pain relief because in MS, patient also experience muscle pain, muscle stiffness. So if muscles are stiff, we will give pain relief and muscle relaxant as well. We will refer the patient to neurologist, okay? So a neurologist will give specific medications that slow down the progression of disease. Now, keep in mind that there are no medication that can cure MS. Just like diabetes, you cannot cure MS, but you can control the symptoms and you can give medications that can slow down the progression of disease. So specific medication like glitaramer acetate, neurologist will start the patient on these medications, okay? Uh, all right. So if the patient presents in GP, then of course, you will not be able to do MRI brain and spinal cord as well. You will do just the routine blood test and form your seniors, give symptomatic treatment, tell them that you are suspecting MS and refer them to neurologist. Then the neurologist will perform MRI brain and spinal cord. And once the diagnosis is confirmed, then they will start on specific medication that is glitaramer acetate. Support groups. So basically, as MS is a lifelong condition, then you, you will also refer the patient to support groups, okay? Because it is a lifelong condition and it affects almost every aspect of their life, they are going to need a lot of support. So there are basically two support charities in UK. Number one is MS Society and number two is MS Trust. So you will also refer this patient to these support groups, okay? To give them support. All right. Uh, Bell's palsy. So Bell's palsy is basically... Uh, it, it is not a generalized condition. It involves only the facial muscles. So you will explain it to the patient that Bell's palsy is a temporary weakness or lack of movement that usually affect muscles of one side of the face. Okay, so temporary weakness that affect muscles of one side of the face. There is no known cause for it. Okay. Uh, so tell the patient that it should get better within six months, but may take longer for some people. All right. Um, don't go into, you know, unnecessary scientific details for the patient telling them that seventh nerve, there is seventh nerve that control the muscles of the face and sometimes there is a duopathic weakness and blah, blah, blah. And sometimes viral infection is suspected. Just tell them that temporary weakness, lack of movement of one side of the face, no known cause should get better within six months, but may take longer for some people. Uh, investigations aren't really needed. There are no specific investigations for Bell's palsy. However, uh, you should do, um, you know, the routine blood tests. Symptomatic treatment is eye drops because, you know, uh, the muscles of the face are affected and it's a condition of the seven nerves. So, um, they are not able to close their eyes. So eyes can dry out. So you are, so you will be, uh, prescribing them eye drops to keep their eyes moist an eye page for closing the eye at night. Uh, specific treatment are basically oral steroids, that is oral prednisolone, and they should start within three days of the starting of symptom. So the patient presents within 72 hours, then you will give oral prednisolone, and this is basically for seven to 10 days. Okay, uh, you will safety net this patient uh, about you know, worsening of the symptoms or any new weakness anywhere in the body. And appearing any of any new weakness anywhere in the body will actually mean that this is not Bell's palsy and it can point out towards stroke. That's why you will safety net the patient about this. Safety netting basically means that you will warn the patient about any potential complication, any red flag signs to look out for. So the patient is aware, recognize the sign early and uh, contact the ER immediately. So I hope it was helpful. And I will see you with the next video.